Hello everyone, I'm back in Europe in more ways than one. Today I'm reviewing this bargain of a hot hatch, a Renault Sport Megane. The first generation Renault Sport Megane as it happens, and I'm only one car away from completing the set, which is the second generation car. I recently got a taste of the latest third generation Renault Sport Megane, a car which actually I really loved. Uh, this one is of course much cheaper and in many ways a much more honest performance car. You see it doesn't have anywhere near the amount of electronic trickery as the newer car. It's got a slightly bigger 2 litre engine and you can pick one up for a song. This is the R26 F1 Team Lux Flubberdubberdur. It's got a huge ridiculously long name but the key facts and figures are 2 litre engine, officially 230 horsepower in this more like about 240. Uh, it's got a big old bum at the back, which is the easiest way of identifying this generation. And you can buy one for, well, a few thousand pounds. Uh, this one has been brought to me by channel fan Carl, and he uses it, uh, well, quite intensively. In fact, he's put over 100,000 miles on this car, mainly doing track days and things like that. This car's done well, over 20 of them, and it's been pretty damn good. I've seen it on track and he does enjoy it. As track cars go, this one is fairly standard. You have an uprated AirTech intercooler at the front. You have some uprated uh, brake hoses, pipes and uh, better pads. And you've got a slightly fruitier exhaust on the back. Other than that, this is pretty much business as usual and all the things that he's done to the car have been maintenance. As I'm currently driving through a nice little village at 30 mile an hour, I might as well tell you about some of those maintenance items. The car has been generally reliable in that way that only French cars can be. Mechanically, it's been pretty solid. And that was until at about 120,000 miles at Spa, its turbo went pop. But in fairness, a car that's used quite aggressively and quite frequently and has that many miles put on it, I think that's kind of forgivable. Now, he chose to simply replace the turbo rather than upbraking it, and that's why this car is putting out a relatively standard power figure. It has had a map on it, but he hasn't been chasing any sort of big horsepower figures with this car. I know that you can tune them up, and the modding scene for these is quite popular. A certain Mr. Lockwood, indeed, spent a lot of time modding his car up before then selling it. So if you want to see more about DIY stuff on one of these, then go and watch some of his videos. Uh, this video, however, is going to be about the drive of this, and it's for that reason that I'm thankful that this is largely standard. Standard in this case though does include a few trick things. Now the F1 team or the R26 more accurately, I, I do get slightly confused with all the various models of this because you've got a 225, you've got a 230, you've got the R26, you've got the R26.R which kind of came after this was a super hardcore stripped out version that is a uh, pretty cool I've got to admit and you've also got the F1 team version, you've got looks, you've got cup, you've got all sorts of stuff. They are slightly confusing and hard to keep track of. From my position though, the things that I notice are the very nice leather Recaros, which are part of the look spec. You get Recaros with the R26 version anyway. I think it's interesting that they called it the R26 because this was a celebration of them winning the Formula One World Championship when the car came out. Except the car that won the World Championship was actually called the R25. Strange, but true. The, the handbrake down here is weird. I mean, I've driven some cars with some odd handbrakes. This one takes the biscuit. When you put your foot down, it's fairly brisk, although not extremely rapid, but of course you wouldn't expect it to be. The car weighs about 1,355 kilos officially, and with 240 horsepower, you're not going to expect it to just fire you down the road in a straight line, but it's certainly quick enough to enjoy. makes a fairly pleasant noise when you're on it, not too loud in here, and of course with this car spending a lot of time on track you don't want something excessively loud otherwise you'll simply be flicked off a track day and that's not really any fun at all is it? Now in the Renault Sport world most of these cars are available with the uh, the cup chassis option 
and that basically stiffens everything up and makes the car a little bit more track orientated and these have that that's what they start off with so you've got sportier dampers and all that jazz and honestly I'm not the best person to talk about the differences between the cup and regular versions because I'm probably going to get it wrong because I'm just not an expert in French cars it turns out gear shift however is actually much better than I thought it might be healing and tying is not too difficult either steering unfortunately is a little bit of a disappointment that was one of the highlights in the third generation car had this beautiful nicely weighted very direct steering and this car not so much this is electric steering and you can tell that it's an early version of that because it's just missing that feedback and information that you want fortunately the chassis talks to you quite a bit through the seat and it is rather stiff there are quite a few rattles and things in here as to be expected and you know that French reliability that I was talking about well um, the windows don't work uh, the regulators packed up on them and that is apparently quite a common fault and also quite expensive to fix aircon blows nice and cold though Overall, the interior in these is a fairly cheap feeling affair, but that's exactly what you would expect from a relatively cheap French hot hatch. I don't think you can really count that against it. I mean, a lot of people these days are buying these explicitly for track use, in which case you've got half a chance of just throwing the whole lot in the bin anyway. As a daily car, this is actually not too bad. With that slightly weird rear end, you've got a very large and quite usable luggage space. And if you're driving gently, the car will do over 30 miles to the gallon, which is a fair achievement for an old school turbocharged hot hatch. Seating position is a little on the high side, but not distractingly so. And it looks like there's also quite a bit of room to lower these seats too, if you so desire. Driving this car around at normal town speeds is perfectly easy so if you're looking at this as an only car then it's not a bad choice at all because it will do the daily duties very well the ride is certainly on the firm side but it's not crashy or too harsh and again, it is the sort of thing that I would expect from a car with this kind of sporting and track intent. Turbo lag is there, but not too bad. And the car pulls very cleanly all the way to about 7,000 RPM. Now this is the kind of road on which this car is very clearly at home. Once you get over a certain speed, the ride does smoothen out a little bit and you can tell that it is in its happy place. In fact, I would say if you were talking about one of these as a dedicated track car, you could nearly say it's a little bit soft in its standard setup. But of course, if you then go and stiffen it for track use, you are gonna ruin its manners on the road. My personal issue with cars like this as well, if you're going to track them, has always been the fact that if you're not careful, it's very easy to spend far in excess of the car's value on upgrading it. And by the time you've done that, you probably could have bought a different car for the price differential anyway. Brakes work very well. The pedal's not got an awful lot of feedback, but it responds quite quickly and does exactly what you tell it to. That limited slip diff you can feel at work, and it's certainly a less refined beastie than the third generation car, but it's also usefully smaller, which makes piloting it down roads like this quite entertaining. Much like the third generation car, this is actually quite an easy car to get into a rhythm with. And really my major criticism of it as a road car is the steering. It's just not giving me the confidence that the later car does and that's a shame. So I'd be really interested to see how the second generation car compares because what that has is the two litre engine. It's essentially an evolution of this, I believe. 
and there is a weak point in the third generation car that little 1.8 just isn't quite brilliant and that is a shame but for the money people are asking for one of these you could do a hell of a lot worse you really could If you're in the market for one of these, I think one of the main rivals might actually be another Renault Sport product because for about the same money, you'd be looking at a Clio 197. Now the Clio is going to have a very different character indeed. I've not actually driven one yet, I've come close on a couple of occasions and I've also come close to buying one because they do look really, really good. But that has a two litre naturally aspirated engine, so you're gonna to have to work it a lot harder than this. It's gonna make tuning it much more difficult if kind of big power is your sort of thing. And they are overall a very different car. Slightly smaller car, but newer. And both are similar in terms of practicality. The Clio has actually got a surprisingly big boot. In fact, that's one area where the second generation began really does suffer. And so I think it will be very interesting to try and do a twin test with both of those because they're both pretty cool cars. However, today's review is about the Renault Sport Megan. And it's actually a hell of a lot of fun. It is a true hot hatch hero. It's not expensive, it's not flashy, it's not a great car to show off to people. But in terms of having fun and going down a road like this as fast as anything you might imagine, it's spot on. Thanks for watching everyone, please like, comment below, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, we'll see you for the next one, bye bye.